Hello and welcome to this review of my Tesla 259 keyboard. This is a keyboard module from a Tesla computer. Tesla were a Czechoslovakian company that was state-sponsored into a monopoly in electronics. So everything electronic from Czechoslovakia at the time was made by this company. But because they never updated anything, as soon as communism fell, they of course pretty much immediately went bust. I got this one from someone for a friendly price using some money I'd raised selling sets of polyoxymethylene keycaps, and it's definitely an interesting acquisition, even if I obviously can't use it. Almost all the microchips on this keyboard have 74 in them. So it's possible that this keyboard is from 1974. If it is, it's my oldest keyboard to date. The PCB has a rather unique look to it, with what appears to be a colourless solder mask, giving it a kind of honey-like golden colour. And you can see the traces that are on the other side through it. Down here is where it reads the model number. 259861560, Zbrojovka KP Brno. Brno is a city in the Czech Republic, so that would make sense. Also, from the pinout, you can immediately tell it's a whole effect keyboard. Now, the company most often associated with Hall Effect switches is Honeywell, who produced them through their microswitch division, but the Soviets also produced lots of them, and this is Tesla's take on Hall Effect switches. Previously, I reviewed the archetypal Honeywell Hall Effect switches in an ITT Courier keyboard, which are very smooth, but also very heavy. However, Honeywell also made a dual magnet version of their Hall Effect switch, which looked completely different, and which is said to be even better. Tesla took it even further though, as these are actually quad magnet switches. Yes, that's right. There are as many as four magnets in each and every single switch. I mean, overkill much? Note that one side of each magnet is actually painted white, presumably to indicate the polarity of the magnets. Now, by default, these Tesla switches are pretty decent, quite smooth, but not quite as smooth as the Honeywell's. However, unlike the Honeywells, they have one major advantage. See, the Honeywell switches are sealed, so if dust or dirt gets in, you can't open them to get it out again. But these are the exact opposite. See, each switch is held to the board with two of these metal retaining tabs, which, by the way, are also present on the dual magnet version of Honeywell's whole effect switches. And then if you take off a keycap, and use something to pry back those two retaining tabs, like so. You can just take the switch off like this. Then if you take out the spring, as well as the little retaining ringlet inside, like so, you can just take apart the switch it's only four parts, so it's quite easy, and you can do this with minimal effort and no special tools. So if they're dirty, you can just clean them with some compressed air, which I did, and I also applied some light lubricant as well to make them even smoother. And the end result is pretty good. They're really nice now, and they're not weighted as heavily as Honeywell Type 3 is, though they're still not exactly a light switch. Then, after you're done, you can just reassemble them. In case you're wondering, it's not possible to reassemble any of the parts the wrong way, because the parts are designed to be non-reversible. Simple but useful. Then, when you're done, just slide the switch back over the sensor, which is this black thing here. Like so. And then, Bob's your uncle. Now, the switches sound a little louder than Honeywell's. Uh, maybe a bit more shallow as well, but it's still not a bad sound. The sound differs a bit across the board, of course, due to acoustics. Uh, my favorite is this one here that reads Vizov Tester, if I remember my Cyrillic correctly. Now that's a sound. The keycaps are thick double shot ABS, and they're pretty nice. Again, they're not quite as good as the Honeywell keycaps, which are some of the thickest I've ever seen. The mount is partly interchangeable. The Honeywells fit the Tesla keyboards. They're very tight fit, but it works. 
but the Tesla keycaps are too loose to fit properly on Honeywell keyboards. The Tesla's keycaps are nice and colorful and come in black, white, red, and blue. And the writing is Cyrillic, of course, although both Slovakia and the Czech Republic use the Latin alphabet nowadays. Next to the block nav, it's got a cluster of 12 programmable function keys labeled PayF. And there's also a double, mutkp, vzdv, and burk button. The spacebar is stabilized by two dummy switches and a wire stabilizer that you can just slide out like this, which is quite neat, much better system than most keyboards have. And it stabilizes really well, by the way, it's very effective. There's a little speaker module here that I assume is used to beep whenever you press a key, a little bit like the Zenith I reviewed recently. Essentially, it becomes a linear clicky switch that way. By the way, it's fucking heavy. It doesn't even have a case around it or any leads. Just the PCB and the switches, and yet it still weighs over a kilo and a half. Jeez, I can only imagine what the whole computer module was built like. Overall, a really nice keyboard. Of course, it's not exactly easy to adapt to usage, and the layout is pretty non-standard, but the switches are pretty nice and infinitely serviceable. I don't know what the specified lifetime of these Tesla switches is, but Honeywell claimed a lifetime of 30 billion. That's right, billion key presses, and those switches can't even be opened, so I'm pretty confident these will hold up to something of this order of magnitude. Although, to be honest, even if it was two orders of magnitude lower, it would still be indestructible for all intents and purposes. Anyway, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing some random nonsense on this keyboard.